Congress has never passed a law requiring birthright citizenship for illegal aliens, and the Constitution does not — I say that to the media — does not require it. Read it. Because illegal aliens are not subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. More on that in a bit. President Trump is keeping immigration front and center in this campaign rhetoric, particularly his intention to end the 14th Amendment guaranteeing birthright citizenship. This morning he wrote, quote, so-called birthright citizenship, which costs our country billions of dollars and is very unfair to our citizens, will be ended one way or the other. It is not covered by the 14th Amendment because of the word subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Many legal scholars agree. Harry Reid was right in 1993 before he and the Democrats went insane and started with the open borders, which brings massive crime with a capital C stuff. Don't forget the nasty term anchor babies. I will keep our country safe. This case will be settled by the United States Supreme Court. Well, for his part, the former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada didn't let that go unanswered. Today, he responded with a statement that read in part, quote, In 1993, around the time Donald Trump was gobbling up tax-free inheritance money from his wealthy father and driving several companies into bankruptcy, I made a mistake. This president wants to destroy, not build, to stoke hatred instead of unify. He can tweet whatever he wants while he sits around watching TV, but he is profoundly wrong. Yesterday, they located Speaker Paul Ryan, who surfaced briefly, not on camera, mind you, but we got to hear his voice. He told a radio interviewer the president is wrong. You obviously cannot do that. Uh, you cannot end birthright citizenship with an executive order. And here is why Paul Ryan never says anything. Today, the president went after him, and we quote, Paul Ryan should be focusing on holding the majority rather than giving his opinions on birthright citizenship, something he knows nothing about. Our new Republican majority will work on this, closing the immigration loopholes and securing our border. Right before he left the White House for tonight's rally, Trump was asked about that. Why are you attacking Paul Ryan? A birthright citizenship is a very, very uh, important subject. In my opinion, it's much less complex than people think. I think it says it very loud and clear in the Constitution that uh, you don't have to go through the process of whatever they're talking about. I believe that you can have a simple vote in Congress or it's even possible, in my opinion, this is after meeting with some very talented legal scholars that you can do it through an executive order. So legal scholars have been by for a visit. Rick Wilson is with us tonight, a proud Floridian, <laughs> proud never Trumper, also happens to be a veteran at the business of politics, a Republican strategist and an author. And his latest book is called Everything Trump touches, touches dies. Guess how he feels about the president. Hey, Rick, we should point out that uh, legal scholars we've consulted feel this is enshrined in the Constitution and is not subject to the whim of an executive order. So get that on the record. What's the upside, do you right. think, in attacking the House Speaker? Uh, there's no upside, really. This is just Donald Trump sort of blame storming in advance for what's going to happen on Tuesday in the House. He's looking for angles to say it wasn't my fault. If only Paul Ryan had stuck with my brilliant messaging on immigration, it would have been fine. But, uh, you know, I, I think, as, as you and I both know, the, who, whatever bus station he rounded up his legal scholars from, uh, this, is, this was a, 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 a fantasy that fed into the, 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 to the Trump base alone. It wasn't ever something that was going to really happen. He's going to do nothing about it. It's the equivalent of Mexico paying for the wall. Neither Me Mexico has neither paid nor has the wall been built. And so this is this one more Trump fantasy he's throwing out there to disrupt uh, or to, 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 to stoke the anger of his base and to try to convince them that uh, that they need to come out and vote on Tuesday. And what about, let's call it the surge, not to a place like Afghanistan, where we only have 14,000 uh, U.S. troops uh, on station, but to the southern border, where today the number jumped up to potentially 15,000? This is using America's military might as performance art, Brian. And I think it is a sad and, and, and rather, and rather uh, you know, counterproductive move on his part. They're not going to be involved in law enforcement. This is not an invading force. 
This is not, these are not armed terrorists crossing the border, no matter what Donald Trump wants to say about it. They're still about a month and a half away by most estimates. So this is just a, another part of this, uh, of this professional wrestling that he's show that he's putting on for the country right now, trying to ratchet up this idea that there's a brown tide sweeping up from Mexico that's going to take, their jo take everyone's jobs and kill their children and, and eat their dogs or something. It, it's just... This is the, uh, and what, it, what this is doing is diminishing our national security. These folks right now are not training. They're not, they're not preparing for actual conflict in the world. They're not making us safer anywhere in the world. You know, we've got a lot of challenges around the globe right now, and these people are being de deployed as a political stunt by this president. Let's talk about Pittsburgh. Uh, such an ugly chapter sure. after the largest uh, single loss of life, uh, largest mass murder of Jews in our nation's history. Yeah. Not all. In fact, just a few of these 11 souls have been buried at the time of the president's uh, visit mm -hmm. with public officials telling him he was not welcome there. The president this morning uh, puts out this. We talked about this in the first uh, segment. Melania and I were treated very nicely yesterday in Pittsburgh. Office of the president was shown great respect on a very sad and solemn day. We were treated so warmly. Small protest was not seen by us. Stage far away. The fake news stories were just the opposite. Disgraceful. Tweeted out as we're showing with attached video, which brought us this from Maggie Haberman of the New York Times. I've unfortunately covered a lot of shootings over the years. I don't really remember an elected official aware that they were so controversial, putting out a video of themselves at a crime scene to celebrate their own right. performance. Um, Rick, after pipe bombs, after Pittsburgh, you talk about this a lot on social media. You talk about it in your book. Where are we as a country? You know, Brian, I make a lot of flippant remarks about this president because I, I believe a lot of the time he deserves mockery. In this case, uh, the, the level of, of moral horror and outrage about him making the slaughter of 11 American Jewish citizens by an alt-right madman, by, by a murderer, uh, making it all about him, making it all about, oh, we were treated respectfully, oh, the fake news. He can't resist being the worst version of Trump. This is a man who, I, I say this a lot, he may have the title of president, but he has never earned the mantle of the presidency. He has never taken on the sacred duties of president. And one of those duties is to put the country before your own ego. And, and this was a perfect example of why I believe he's unfit for this office and always has been, because he went there and he, he essentially turned it into a photo op for himself, turned it into a campaign video. I don't think anyone who saw that, that, that tweet today could, of good conscience could think, of, think anything but you know, a, a sense of revulsion about it. Rick Wilson, thank you so much for coming back on our broadcast. Look forward to the next time we get you, it. we're able to talk to you. Rick Wilson joining us tonight from Florida. Again, his latest book is called Everything Trump Touches Dies. Coming up after another break with less than a week to go until Election Day. Has the president in his own way already conceded the House? That's what some think they can hear in his message. We will ask Steve Kornacki at the big board when we come back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.